this is James Bateman's geology gallery. James Bateman was the designer of the garden here at Bidolph Grange, and he came here in 1841 with his wife, Mariah. His idea was that when people arrived at the gallery, they would be able to make a journey through time from the entrance through several bays, which were meant to represent the days of creation, and then out into the garden. Bateman was relating this to the story of Genesis, the, the creation from the Bible, so that the gallery begins before creation. The actual first bay, although it doesn't say so, it starts off with, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Then we move on to day one, and then we've got the life beginning to be created within the seas. Day three is the most complete section that still survives in the gallery. Here we've got the strata of rocks that are meant to represent the coal measures, the rocks of the local area. And above it, we can see the impressions of the fossils that were attached to the wall. This, for example, was the root of a huge tree that would have been growing about 300 million years ago. This was the root of the same tree, a lepidodendron, that we have a piece of the bark of that type of tree still attached to the wall here. So being able to see these fossils that have survived 300 million years is one of the joys of being able to be here in this gallery and to imagine what else that Victorians would have been able to see and wonder at. The gallery is the only one of its kind in the world, so we like to say unique. <laughs> it's important internationally because when the gallery was built, there was a lot going on. Uh, there was a lot of conflict between science and religion. There was reports of people fighting in the streets after church services. And it was a real statement of its time, a real snapshot in history. It's a statement of both his scientific interests and his religious belief and him marrying the two together. And it's, it's interesting in context of this wider social setting that was going on in Victorian society. And there's this link with Charles Darwin. We know that Bateman corresponded with Darwin, Darwin's evolution of the species, but Bateman was almost building his theory. So that's what we could call it, you know, rather than a written theory. And it would have generated a lot of interest at the time. He had certainly had paying visitors that came into the garden and they would have come in this way and probably would have understood the bays that said day one, two and three, but were completely thrown by the, these fossils and these rocks. This was real cutting edge science. And the only way it was once described to me to equate it to modern day science was space exploration. We know there's something out there, but we don't quite know what it is. I've got some of my favourite holes in the wall here. And this is one where we know there were footprints left behind by early reptiles. Further down the gallery, one of the very obvious gaps in the wall is where there was the tusk from a mammoth. At the end of this tusk, you can see little bits left attached to the plaster. And this sort of creature would have gone extinct about 11,000 years ago. At the moment, the Geological Gallery is undergoing ongoing restoration and we are still researching it. So although we know an awful lot about the gallery, about this period in history and the social context to it, the cultural context to it, we still don't have a complete picture. 